Hello everyone, Wanda the Foiling Rock Lady here and today I want to work on some butterflies. Fly away. Anyways, these are the butterflies that I've picked out. Um, I don't know if I'm going to follow the color scheme, but I love the butterflies themselves. I'll be working on a Santorini and I have cut them out and I'm going to place them on my rock, you know, as such, and I'll be tracing those on to get the images on there. But before that, I'm gonna do a watercolor clouds in the sky. And um, I've never done this before, so the technique is, it's not mine, I watched it on YouTube. Um, and it's uh, basically, it's what you would do on watercolor paper. You need a paper towel, scrunched up, ready to use, okay? You need your watercolors. You can use your pencils or your pens. I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, click out palette, which by the way, I saw one of these at Walmart yesterday um, for like $14, it wasn't that expensive. So these are travel watercolors, so you can take them with you on the go. Anyway, so I'm just going to pick a blue. I'm not sure which one yet, but so we wanna start by getting our rock wet, thoroughly wet clean, clear water. Okay. You just want to get some of your blue watercolor and start at the top. And this is going to be kind of a gradient going from dark to light. And if you need to take color out, you can dry your brush and just run it across your rock. Not dry, dry, but you know, pull the water out of your brush. And that'll take some of it off of your rock. Okay, so about like so. You know, my rock's kind of big. I need to lift my camera up a bit. Okay, so take your wrinkly paper towel and you're going to use it to create the clouds. So you're going to press it in and you're removing some of the paint with the paper towel. Can you see our clouds happening? You can remove as much as you want or as little as you want. And I want this to be sort of just a wash of color, you know, because the butterflies are going to be our main attraction and we don't want to have this huge blue blotch in the middle. So there we have it, some blue skies. I think it's a very easy, very beautiful, effective way to get a sky background. Now you're going to want to let that dry completely before you transfer your um, image onto your rock, tracing it in carbon paper. You don't want for any reason that carbon paper to gray out your, your page. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let the rock dry. I'll be right back with you. Okay, let's see. Maybe this is better. All right. So now I'm dry, I'm going to apply my image where I want it. I'm going to move it to this side a bit so in case I decide, which I haven't decided yet, if I want to write something I have a little bit of room here. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, to trace, I'm going to use, this is a nail stylus, this is a, a very tiny one, it's by Winstonia, uh, something blue line. It's a nail brush detailing set of brushes. It comes with a massive amount of brushes. It's such a cool, cool set. Sorry. 
I had uh, several several um, subscribers ask me about these brushes that I've been using. So um, I think there's probably a couple more, but you get the idea here. I, I like to keep the tops on them when I'm not using them. Anyways, it's this nice little set of detailing brushes. You know, you've got these small, really small brushes to do great detail work. So anyways, I like to use this little stylus to do some tracing with. It makes it really easy to, um, it's easy to hold and I don't have to press as hard when I'm transferring my image onto the rock. So with these butterflies, what my, um, my goal here is to apply the veins in the pattern, but not so much, you know, the shading and, and all of that. So I'll show you on one here, kind of what I'm doing. And I am going to paint the black parts. Um, black with an acrylic so that we can use watercolor um, to paint the butterflies. I hope that makes sense. I'm <laughs> thinking while I'm tracing and that's not working. But if you can see that. Now when you want to check your, your work while you're tracing, lift up just a bit. Don't remove your image. It's a nightmare trying to realign it and you won't. It unless you're like wow really really good at eyeballing it won't ever um, be back on the same hope you understand okay so you can you know move your rock manipulate it uh, any way you need to get your image on there the way you want it and, you know, art is subjective. You do you. If you don't want a certain part of the butterfly, skip that part. You know. Um, anyways, go ahead and trace your butterflies on your rock. And I will meet you back here for the painting. Hello there. So we've got our butterflies all traced. And I went ahead and started whining at, for you know forgot I was doing a tutorial anyways um I had to go run some errands in between so you know it's just almost like sleeping <laughs> anyways I am using black flash uh, by color shift full cart color shift sorry that print on there is a little wonky anywho it's a uh, black with a gold flash and it is just beautiful beautiful and I am basically lining everything that's black on my reference photo. It's here. So everything that's black is getting the black gold, the black shift. So I'll be doing all four butterflies in all of the black areas. Alrighty, I'm going to let you go ahead and line on your own so you don't have to spend two hours watching me do it. <laughs> and I will check back in with you and we will start the watercolor. Okay, we are done with the lining with the black color shift. Very gorgeous. And we're going to hit it with the watercolor to get our butterflies looking more colorful. So I'm going to start up here with the green, um, gold, yellow, purples. In there, I'm going to use this one, burnt sienna, just a tad bit. I have just a little cup of water here get the tip of my pencil wet and use my palette dish 
just to get some color checking checking the color a bit okay so for these I'm just going to throw some color in here Like so. Okay. And for the purple. Purple. This is ultramarine, which is not going to work. It's not purple enough. Um, hmm, might have to grab a different purple. That was not working either. Okay, click out. 18 let's see what this purple is fun exploring <laughs> let's see here that will work we don't need much just a tad Okay, this is going to go right here on the tippy tips of our butterfly. Sort of blend it in with our burnt sienna. Make sort of a green gold color. Color. Seam over here. Then with a clean brush, or rinse your brush really, really well, go ahead and blend It's so dark. Let me turn the flash on. Hang on. Well, that's not helping either. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, thank goodness it didn't go on the rock, huh? Ah, catastrophe. Okay, for this guy over here, I'm going to have some red brick. On the inner part here and your clean water brush
Okay. And that is going to change into sort of a lime green. But we're going to use a bit of yellow to get some orange right at the intersection. In here. My blue sky is kind of having some words with us, yeah. <laughs> okay, clean brush. Blend that yellow so you can get a bit of orange. And then grab your lime green, which is moss green in the King Art. King Art line. The yellow was Naples. Naples yellow. And blend that. And if you get a little water out on the rock, just clean it quickly. You can grab a dry Q-tip, clear water. You know, you can also take and tap your brush to your pencil if you like. I just find less control with my color that way. But that is another way to apply the color. Okay, take a Q-tip and sort of dry out the acrylic, the black color in the in our color shift here. This is looking so good. Okay. Look how gorgeous. Yay. All right, next butterfly. We have, we'll go even a bit brighter here. This is violet. Actually, we're going to go back to this red brick, which is more magenta. I don't know. I'm mixing the two violet and magenta. Uh, I'm sorry, violet and red brick. <laughs> going with the magenta color. And I'm going to be trying to. I'm going to try to be a bit more mindful around our acrylic paint. Since these Pentel Aquash brushes make a super point on the end, you can do some micro work with them.
Okay. And that does come around down in these, just this tippies down here. <clears throat> and we're going to move into a, let's see here, sort of a peachy orange into a yellow and then to a purple. Okay, rinse that, lighten it up. Make sure you're blending your magenta into your orange. Okay, and purple, which we still have a little left in our dish from. I'm going to do that part, and then we're going to add a little yellow. And this time the yellow, no, we'll stay with the other yellow. Ah, Naples yellow again. Make sure your brush is clean and clear water. Don't drip it on your rock. <laughs> Not too much water, just just a tad. Just we're gonna just in between the two colors. Take the water out of your brush, and then. Take the watercolor up off of your acrylic. I am patting it on a towel over here every time my hand leaves the leaves the frame. Just so you know. Here, I'll use this so you can see. Or you can use the Q-tip. I just took too much last time I used the Q-tip. Love it. Yay, we're so close to being done. Oops, I see a boo-boo. Oh, I hope I can catch it. Yay, it came right off. Okay. All right, this one is blue and very sheer green, so I'm going to use a yellow to get that color. Yeah. And let's see here. We're going to use Delft blue and Kingfisher, okay? Get those wet, activate them. It 
So this is the darker blue on the outer bits here. Okay, and this one, the uh, Kingfisher, we're going to put sort of in the middle here. Nope. Okay, we're going to blend those first before we go putting yellow in here. Dry brush, not dry, damp, you know, wet, not, don't add extra water to it. Is. So we're going to pull it into this blue. Have I told you guys how much I love watercolor pencils and pens and pens on rocks? <laughs> so easy to blend. Okay, now we have some, it's a very sheer yellow green. So I'm just going to add just a smidge of this yellow in here. And blend it with our blue to get our sheer that's perfect and I'll show you so this is what we did with just a tiniest touch of yellow okay and this is the picture I think it's good I'm, I'm happy with that, definitely. So, we have to let this dry before we can do foils. But, oh my goodness, tell me that's not beautiful. Gorgeous. Now, don't touch where you just painted. I'm sorry, I'm just dusting off some bits of something. But I do see a boo-boo. Uh-oh, here. I'm going to try to remove it with a... Elastomer Eraser. It's by Tombow Mono Zero. Anyways, it's a very tiny pinpoint. It's like a pencil eraser. They do make the sharpenable kind that are actually in a pencil. It's like a colored pencil, but then this would be the bit you use. Okay, that's not working. So I'm going to use a little piece of sandpaper. You got to love Santorini. And with this blue, no, that's the wrong blue. We're not going to do that. No. Just give it a little wash there. Okay. Bring the color back. I like. So I'm going to hit pause, let this dry, and then we will come back and start foiling. 
Okay guys, make sure you have on your masks and your gloves. Let me show you here. Oops. <laughs> your PPE, super important. Um, at minimum, be wearing a paper mask, okay? I'm going to use Essex C Nail Art Foil Glue today. And I'm gonna pour it into my little painting well. So I have better control. And this is gonna be a simple foil. It's one foil for the whole deal. So this was mainly about painting. Our foil is gonna be the small crushed glass style. That's very much like what a Santorini looks like. This is just gonna give it some holographic properties. So we're going to apply our glue. This is a disposable eyeliner brush. Um, it helps us to put the glue exactly where we want it and nowhere else. Since we're working with little tiny places here today. So very carefully apply your glue to just the painted areas. Uh, when I say painted areas, just the watercolor not try to stay off of the acrylic as best you can it's okay if you touch it just our the objective is to give texture but not cover up the pretty shift from the acrylic so i'm just gonna do this butterfly I'm going to do one whole butterfly and then I will let you guys finish your foiling and I'm going to also add some rhinestones at the end of the foiling. Okay, almost ready to cure it. We're going to cure it one cycle in a 6 watt Mac Art Mini Light. One cycle is 60 seconds for this wattage. If you have a higher watt um, UV LED that you're working with, with these types of foils, it's probably okay. But you will still see wrinkling and bubbles happen. You can avoid that by moving into a smaller light a little bitty light this is six watts it has six L six leds also um you don't have to worry about this overcooking your glue which is a big problem with rocks and foils so i do have a big light here that i use often it's the beetles 84 watt i use that for uh curing resin so you need a higher wattage to effectively cure the resin and you need a lower wattage to effectively cure your nail foils. So I'm going to let this go for 60 seconds. Okay, the light switched off. Now when you're using foils, obviously there's a right side and a wrong side. And if you watched my last tutorial, the tattooed rose, uh, whew, yeah, I did a a doozy on there so when you put the wrong side down on your rock when you're using foil it will take up your work um, because it's essentially sticking basically something really sticky to it and it just peels everything right off so the foil will release if you get it on the right side so make certain if you have to test it somewhere else first to figure it out do that make a tester rock before you put it on to your beautiful artwork and know exactly what side is the correct side. Once you identify it, you can write a word like this side up or up or something that you can read properly on the right side. So if it was wrong side, it wouldn't look right, if that makes sense. Anyways, you don't have to let it sit like that. I was just talking. <laughs> 
and be careful when you're using up little bits of your foil too, like that, when you hear it stick real hard like that, that potentially can tear, uh, take up your work as well. So make absolutely certain you are confident when you're foiling that you're not going to tear up your work. I'm just getting little bits that I may have missed. And then cut off the section. And you can save that for something really tiny or toss it. There's a lot left on there. I like to save all my little pieces in a big jar. All right. On to the next one. And I will see you guys back here for the rhinestones. But let's take a look at this before I shut it off. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Sorry. Foil's all done. Look at that. <laughs> gorgeous. Let's see. Lights, camera. So pretty. Okay, so now I have some crystals, rhinestones, sequins, whatever your little heart wants to call them. I think I like to call them rhinestones, I think. <laughs> Anyways, I have a whole bunch of different shapes, you know, just um, floating around in here. So I'm just going to play around and you guys can see what we come up with. Possibly. Uh, anyways. It'll probably be different ones for each butterfly. I think this one needs something bigger or turned. Actually, I think I like these on the butterfly. Oop. Like that. And they're flying everywhere, y'all. Or, let's see, what else do I have over here? I have marquee cut this shape for these littler ones over here, maybe. Maybe marquee with the, uh, with them, um, I don't know. I don't know what this shape is, this shape. Aren't they pretty? Okay, so to adhere your rhinestones, um, I was thinking I might change these to bigger ones, but yeah, we'll just leave those. Okay, I like it. So to adhere it, you can use, I have some UV top coat that I'm going to use my little this is a 12 volt or 12 led I, sorry i always mess that up there's 12 leds and i don't know the voltage on it it's a battery so anyways it is a uv light and it does an amazingly quick job at curing these things so i'm also going to put some of this in my dish and then i'm going to pick up my rhinestones and have a dip in the glue or UV top coat, like so, and set it on my butterfly. And this is going to get a UV resin, and I'll be going around the rhinestones on top of them because it will mess up the facets. So. 
Once it's on there, you want to hit it with the light. But don't shine the light in your dish or you'll have a, a dish of hard UV top coat. Because it is fast, this little light. It just, oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry. Just hit it for a few seconds and it is on there. Yep, it's already done. It's probably about eight to ten seconds, I would guess. Yeah, you better have it where you want it because it doesn't move. <laughs> that one's a little crooked. Eek. And it's okay if you can see the, like I said, it's okay if you can see the, a puddle of the top coat because, let me catch you before you slide, um, because we're going to cover it with resin, not, not cover the whole butterfly, but we'll cover that top coat. Now, if this was on your fingers or any, if you're using it as a, as a sealer, a top coat, you'll need to cure it for probably two minutes or so to get a full cure. You just want to make absolutely certain that it's fully cured before you touch it or give it away or hide it. That way your rhinestones are fully adhered and no little animals or children can pick them off. And one more to go. Ooh. And for the UV resin, I'm going to use a brush today to apply it. Now make sure you have your workspace ready. Not like me. <laughs> All right. I have the 84 watt Beatles UV LED light and I'm gonna do three cycles of 120. This is a riser rock. I put my projects on top of it so that the lights inside here, see these lights, see how they're raised up a bit so they can get the sides of my rock cured as well. So I have Mr. Resin UV. Available on Amazon. I'm just going to put this in between not on top of my rhinestones. And I'm gonna grab a fan brush, one that I don't care about ruining. And I'm gonna spread this out, making certain not to go over the rhinestones, but getting in between them and up next to them. And getting the edges, but not dripping down the sides. Make sure to cover your foils. Make sure you're wearing gloves too and your mask.
resin is so cool. This will self-level as well. It's a little more fussy than regular resin at self-leveling, so you might need to help it along a bit with a torch to warm it up and because it's a little thicker than regular resin. Okay, I'm just gonna grab my edges, my sides. Ah, I forgot to sign it. That's okay. I know a trick. <laughs> if you forget to sign your work, and you're doing your resin. Go ahead and finish your resin, cure it, make it all pretty, and then you can use your UV top coat. Go ahead and sign it right on top of your resin, and then hit it with your UV top coat to seal it with your light. Okay, I am going to torch to get the bubbles out. And that will also help to level the resin. Get down sideways and look to make sure your coverage is good. I like it. I do need a little bit more. Oh, it's so beautiful. Down here on this butterfly. Just a smidge, and I'm not even gonna touch it. I'm gonna torch it so it'll move. Okay, now you can clean this with acetone or you can toss it, uh, wrap it in a tissue if you're gonna toss it for sure. Make sure you toss it somewhere safe, okay? Like so. Okay, one more bubble. So two cycles, 120. You're gonna fit in my, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do six cycles. Okay, my rock doesn't fit all the way in. So we'll have to do one side, turn it, do the other, turn it. So it'll take me a little bit of time, but I will definitely be back to show you the end result. Okay, we're all done. Look at this beauty. There you go. So you got four butterflies and a pretty blue sky. So if you liked what you saw here today, hit subscribe and like. And if you want to be notified, go ahead and hit that bell. Keep an eye out for KDMRG. They're uploading as well. See you soon.